Hey there, friends. Uh, so today I thought I'd show you um, some developer tools, uh, a developer tools tip. So um, let's say that I want to um, get the colors and the fonts for what I see on my uh, new tab page. So I'm using this uh, thing called Palette Tab, uh, which I think is very cool. You can check it out, palettetab.com. Um, and I can like refresh and get new ones and things. It's pretty cool. Sometimes I'll see a font that I think is really great, or if I'm making a demo or something, um, then I'll come to my new tab page and I'll I'll just choose a random font from here that I think looks cool, um, or or a color scheme as well. So yeah, um, what I'm gonna do is I'll pop open my developer tools. By the way, I am using uh, Chrome Canary because my like actual Chrome is totally busted. Um, for some weird reason and so that's why it looks a little different from the chrome you're used to um, this is what your chrome is going to look like in a couple weeks so um, but yeah if you go to like you'll start out in the elements and then if you go to sources um, you'll probably have well this could be um, the navigator could be hidden so you show navigator you can look at file system uh, we could talk about workspaces like another time uh, content content scripts. I think those are like your um, extensions and stuff, maybe. Um, but yeah, we're looking for snippets. This overrides thing. But I think that might have something to do with uh, like being able to override um, scripts that are being loaded. I have to look into that. Uh, but we're going to be talking about snippets today, so we'll make a new snippet. Um, and I'm going to call it uh, get font and color .js. And now I have a little editor here. <clears throat> um, and I can access all the same things that I can access in here, um, including stuff that I can like all the same things that I would write in my console. So normally, if I wanted to do a task like this, this is what I'll do. I'll select uh, here and then I'll go back up to the least common parent. Um, where all of these things are, huh? Looks like the least common parent is probably uh, the the whole body, honestly. Um, but then each one of these has a code um, holster, and then there's an outer wrapper, card front, card back. Here, actually, let's go back to the one that we were, we can actually see. Okay, so there's the card front. If I hover over then uh, I, I'm assuming I'm seeing the card back now. Um, but in any case, I have a color. Um, is that the color? There's a background color. Click to copy color. We've got, um, here's our font container. And another click to copy color here hex container, enter, there we go, hex value. Okay, maybe we could just select the hex value to get all the um, values, and then the font. Oh, let's see. Okay, let's look for font. There we go. So that's going to be... Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's right in front of my face. Okay, so top half has um, the font family. So if we go um, document.query selector, here actually, quick tip. So you can click on something zero, and that will be whatever you have clicked on. Like you have that dollar zero right there. So if you put a dollar zero, that's going to be whatever you have uh, currently selected. But we want to, um, like, let's say for some reason I want to be able to run this on a regular basis. So I'm going to save this uh, to get font and color. Another use case for doing something like this could be like <clears throat> um, in an app that I had a couple of years ago, I added a dev only script, a script that's only run in development mo um, of your app. And it would um, add these dev tools for my app that I could uh, trigger open and, and change what backend I'm pointing to, change. Uh, login as a specific user, um, a whole bunch of really useful things. Um, but I was unable to convince my new team that we should do that. Um, something about production and development should run the same code. Um, 
I disagree. Like, I, I agree with the premise, but disagree with uh, that this would be a problem. But anyway, um, and so I can, instead of uh, having a dev only script, I can use this um, to run a bunch of, of code. Uh, the problem or the limitation you have here is that you don't have access to like the modules and stuff that you're bundling with Webpack. Um, but if you can convince your team to at least expose those things so that you can have your custom scripts here, then um, then that could be really helpful as well. And there are lots of things you can do without actually exposing um, that stuff too. So, okay, yeah. So for uh, what what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it all in here and then we'll put it into uh, into there. So we're going to look for document dot uh, query or um, query selector all up. F. I need the dot to make that a class name. See, this is another cool thing in Chrome Canary. It'll uh, do eager evaluation so you can see what it's going to evaluate to. So there are 10 of them, um, and I'm guessing that's because we have card back and card front. Um, now that's interesting. We've got, oh yeah, this is the wrong font. So I want the, the front. So we're going to do. Card front, card, front, and then top half. There we go. We got five. Boy, this eager evaluation thing's kind of nifty. Um, okay, yeah. So we've got five of these. Um, um, Jake asked a question about uh, code snippets. Um, yeah, uh, and Zach. Uh, so Jake said, hey, I don't like code snippets because the global functions and variables are persistent. Is there a way to overcome this? And Zach said, yeah, um, Jake, you could also wrap your snippet in an iffy, which is immediately invoked function expression. And I'll demonstrate how to do that because, uh, yep, that is bothersome to me as well. Um, and that's that's my solution. OK, so we got our top half um, and then um, a node list. You cannot map. Map is undefined. So we're going to take array dot from that node list, and that will allow us to map. And we'll get our node, and we'll say node dot. Um, oh, hold on a second. Zero. X um, style right style, and then font family. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's go back up here. We'll map, uh, get rid of this thing, uh, node to node.style at font family. Okay, cool. So now we've got all of our fonts. It's great. Now we also want to get our, um, X value. So we can get that with the class hex value and then the text content. So in addition to all this stuff that we're doing, what if we reduce and we'll have the, well, no, we want, I think we want two separate arrays, but reducing will still, we'll take one array, turn it into um, an array of two arrays, I guess. Um, or we just repeat it twice. What would be easier to read? I think repeating it twice. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> we'll run that. And then we'll look um, for um x value and we'll map this to the node.text content. Ta-da! Wheat. So then we'll go to our sources and we'll say we're gonna make a function out of this. This is actually what I normally do. I'll have a run function and I'll call run. But you could do an immediately evoked function expression if you want to. Um, so we'll say our um, colors and fonts, the same thing, except, well, let's make this easier. And then we'll console.log colors and fonts. And then you hit command enter and that'll run or you can click that and that'll run. Um, and with that, I can see my colors and my fonts. And every time that I want to do this, then I can like get access to that. 
cool uh, another cool tip in developer tools is I can copy um I or like we could say a hi and now if I paste then I get my uh, what I just copied so it'll serialize it as JSON and so that might be what I want to do is I want to uh, copy this and now I can paste those um, colors wherever I want um, let's let's scrub this up a little bit because that's kind of annoying um, we'll say JSON parse that do it for me no boo okay so if just a little bit so the font family is going to be a string and it might have quotes around it if there are spaces so um let's see the we can just add a little bit of conditional logic here got lost a okay yeah so we'll add a little conditional logic here to uh, return start here actually let's just um font equals this and font starts with quote then we can json parse font otherwise it'll be fine that'll work there we go sweet oh it's maybe not the cleanest code it can also be like a single quote or whatever but you fix it as as you need to cool but that's that's how you how you do that so now anytime that i come into here I'm like ooh, that's a fancy looking font i can just go in here i can go to my sources uh snippets click on this and hit command enter um also if like let's say i don't have that open and maybe this isn't open either and i'm in here and i'm like i don't want to go there you can um command p or actually command shift p um, or you can command p and then type that carrot thing snippet Oh, there, I'm pretty sure there's a way to run snippets. Um, get, oh, it's, yeah. run snippet, there we go. So exclamation point, and then you type the name of your snippet. Get font and color, execute, and now there it is. So I can be like, oh wow, fancy thing. And then command P, exclamation point, get, and it's in my clipboard right now. And then if I go, Oh, I don't like that one. Oh, but I like this one. Command P, exclamation point, get font color, and boom, it's there. Ta-da. That's neat, right? Um, except that's wrong. What? Here, let's let's uh, fix up my, there's this fail. What is that fail supposed to mean? Well, um, copy. Okay, I'm going to copy, copy. All right. Command P, get font and color. There we go. That's wrong, though. I must have broken something. Hmm. Let's figure out what's going on here really quick. Why is this giving me the wrong stuff? Well, you know what? I, I got to get going. Um, you get the idea. The snippets feature is pretty cool. Um, it allows you to, uh, you, you could author things in here too. Like I, I did a bunch of work in here, but you could write out the whole thing. Uh, right in here and that command enter make uh, allows you to run it pretty quick um this like i said would be really great for if you want to um write out um scripts that you want to run on the page like you could this could be a pretty long thing that clicks all these buttons like think about any workflow that you have where um like you're like man hot reloading would be really cool but i don't trust the data or whatever um you you refresh the page, you run the snippet, and it like fills out a whole form for you. Hits next, 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 and then uh, moves on. Like that that would be pretty sweet. Um, you could also like use Cypress for that, um, and and automate a lot of stuff for Cypress, and then like do all your development work in Cypress. That's something I've considered and just haven't had a chance to include in my workflow. But this is a lot lower. Um, barrier to entry or whatever like getting this all set up another thing actually uh, i'll just show you really quick break on um from snippet all irish well irish has this cool snippet called break on access 
that uh, you can go check out later. But um, I have it, I put it in my snippets um, and it allows you to um, have a breakpoint when something is accessed. So here they say break on document cookie. So anytime the cookie property is accessed or set, um, then the um, and then you'll get a debugger and you can step back and find out what is uh, modifying that thing. It's really, really cool. Uh, so give that a look for sure. I use that on occasion. All right, uh, let me just check really quick. Yeah, okay, sweet. It's been cool, it's been fun. It's been fun and cool, really fun. All right, we'll see you later.